Welcome to the Rhythm Wolf B video. If you haven't seen the A videos yet, there are another two videos I would suggest you checking out first, which demonstrate how the Rhythm Wolf sounded with its stock settings. This is for the modified settings, and you can find links in the description for all the mods that were done with schematics and suggestions for other mods you might want to make. So let's start out with the bass voice. Uh, let's see what we have here. The very first thing I did was change how the decay envelopes work. And actually that's across the board. Um, one of my main complaints with this was that the decay on almost all the voices was way too long. So uh, first thing I did was adjust the, I'm going to turn the resonance full down, cut off full up, and reduce the envelope amount just so it's uh, somewhat just a plain voice here. Uh, so you'll notice that the, um, the voice decays out if you hold the note. So it's no longer um, has a sustain period. It also decays out naturally, so you actually hear the full tail. Uh, I didn't adjust the VCO much because I was concerned about having to reprogram it to get it to retune itself. So instead, I just got rid of the mute function. There was a circuit inside which shut off the VCO after the decay had reached a certain portion, which meant it clipped it, and you didn't get to hear the end of the notes. So now you can have very short or, you know, reasonably long. And it's a little bit longer with more accent. So there's a, there are still two separate envelopes, one for the VCA and one for the VCF. I kept the linear envelope for the VCF, but I changed the VCF entirely. Um, the VCF, it was originally a state variable filter, but with a kind of weird feedback setup to keep the resonance at the same level and then reduce the main signal as you turn resonance up. So it sort of kept the volume somewhat more consistent, but you lost all your bass notes as you turned up the resonance. Now the bass notes stay the same length, but then your resonance increases as you turn up resonance. So you have some issue with distortion at the high end, but that distortion is kind of interesting. and um, and I've kind of backed the volume down a little bit, so it's not quite as loud until you turn up the resonance. Um, it's sort of like a middle ground trade-off between the two. So um, the other thing I did is I changed the filter cutoff to be exponentially controlled rather than linearly controlled. So it actually has a much wider range. And for both the filter and uh, cutoff and resonance, I've adjusted their full ranges to have a whole bunch of resonance and also to bring the, the cutoff filter all the way down super low. So you actually can go sub audible with it and make some sort of like weird like. So it goes, goes, has a, has a much larger range. And here's with the saw. So hold on a second, I had that. There we go, that's better. I had the howl up. I was wondering why there sounded like I had a bit more bite to it. Um, there we go. And this is with the... So let's turn up some resonance. It goes in this kind of low mode where it gets a little squirrely. When you have really high f resonance, um, it becomes distorted. And it creates these sort of like kind of squirrely sort of tones in there. you can add some envelope mod. And with 
with the filter cut off all the way down, it drops it all the way in this sort of like weird subaudible range as you. It's like right down into the basement when you're done. Alright, so I feel like that gives them much better control over it and creates create some more interesting tones. So the next up, turn the rest of these down, is the hi-hats. And with those, I again adjusted the decay so it's not quite as long. That's your longest for the open. That's your longest for the close. And then the shorts are very short. Uh, the other thing I did is made it so that before, when you played an open hat, it just played and then a closed hat would play over the top of it. I made it so that the open hat closes when you hit a closed hat, but it closes with a bit of a time. It's not a direct close like it is on the 808, so it's like... So, it has a bit of... Um, sounds a little more natural. The other thing I did was change how tune works. Tune used to go between an analog and digital noise source. The analog noise source didn't sound so good, so I completely got rid of it. And I adjusted the digital noise source so that the tune knob controls its frequencies. So this is in the middle, but I can turn up into kind of like this weird way down into way down into this sort of like weird crunchy noisy space. So as you adjust the, the tune, you actually need to adjust the volume though to get it to compensate. The lower the lower notes don't aren't as loud so as you come up you need to Just the volume of it. So the next thing I adjusted was the percussion. I got rid of the noise on the percussion. I didn't feel like it added much to the sound. Um, it also bled through on everything. Uh, they're a little quiet. Um, and that's because I adjusted the, um, the VCA inside distorted heavily and I got rid of that by bringing the level down. But since the level is now down, it's a little bit quieter, so you need to turn it pretty high up. I, there's, something, there's a resistor I can modify inside there and I think if I were to open it up again, I would bring the volume back up. But the noise mix now, rather than mixing in some noise, mixes between the high and low percussion sounds. And the tunes, tune as they did before. Still not the most useful voice in the world, but I think this is more in line with how, with how I'd want to use it. Like, I don't think I would have used it before at all. Um, and uh, I also had a little bit more kind of punch at the, if uh, with the accented notes. Uh, the, um, the snare drum, 
Didn't do a whole lot to that besides for just adjust the decay. And I rewired the VCA so it's more like an 808. So you can tune it as you could before. That's all pretty similar. You can get rid of the noise or bring in the noise. Uh, I left it so the noise was actually quite loud because I I like that kind of like sizzle there at the really high levels. Um, that might not be everybody's thing, but I left it, you know, left it in as an option. The decay I still left kind of long, but like not excessively so. I mean, it still is kind of ex excessively long in cases, but. So that's adjusted with the uh, accent, accent level. So it's something you can program in if you want longer decays. You can hit more accent, and then you know. And again, that's still a bit excessive, but I think there's a kind of a more interesting range inside there. So probably still. Probably end up using it more in that range. So, and the kick I didn't do too much to. I modified a little bit the tone sweep. So when it first gets a hit, it will sweep the tone a little bit. It'll pitch it up and then bring it down and the time and the amount. But otherwise it's pretty similar to how it was before. does the same as it did before, it just gives a little extra punch at the beginning. And as for the main noise out, I will leave the main up and I'll bring up one voice at a time. And you can see that it's gotten a lot quieter. And that's mostly because I removed the analog noise from most of the circle circuit pathways. And there was a number of places where the VCAs were always left on. And I made sure they shut themselves off when the note was not playing. So as for the howl function, I found that to be really useless as it went through the whole mix. So I had to make a decision. I felt like the kick and the bass were the only two things I would ever want to use it with. And I picked one and I picked the bass to run it through. And I think that was the right decision if I was going to use just one. Um, a switch would be nice because the kick drum does sound good run through it. Um, but uh, it's now you can use it in a mix and not have to worry about like destroying the rest of your sounds every time you want to run distortion on one of them.